Welcome to the Lynn Lowdown. Today we have Kathleen Walsh of YMCA here with us. How are you, Kathleen? I'm great. How are you? You know, it's uh, the sun is out, so I'm happy. Can't complain, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. This is uh, unprecedented times that we are in. So just tell me um, a little bit about when we first got, when you guys first got news of the virus and the outbreak and you slowly started to see things shut down. What, what was your first reaction? You know, we've been watching the virus really since January. Um, in that regard, you know, we, we had prepared in terms of um, additional uh, cleaning stations, um, signage, ordering extra inventory, um, mostly because of my own personal germaphobe. You know, I, I was watching it yeah. and wanted to make sure that our wives were safe. Now, never did I ever expect it to scale to what it scaled to. Um, you know, when we had to close our doors on March 17th, um, that was something that I never prepared for, nor did I ever even imagine could happen. Mm -hmm. you know, and now we're up to day, I don't know, 62, I think we've been close. Yes, somewhere around there. It's yeah. A, it's, it's been pretty high. How are, uh, I know you guys have a, you guys have a lot of staff and a lot of programs that were affected by it. How were you just able to, you know, keep communication with your staff and keeping them informed? So we've established a couple different things. We've established a, um, a staff Facebook page. We have anyone is invited twice a week to staff calls. Um, so we have um, calls twice a week, upwards of an hour where, you know, I talk about where we are as an organization and then answer any question. Uh, we also have an email that goes out every other week to everybody. So we have almost 800 staff and we have to furlough um, over 700 of them. Some of them have been coming back in, um, you know, to, to do Zoom classes, to read to the kids via Zoom. And then, you know, starting next week is kind of our phase one of bringing people back mm -hmm. um, to, to get us ready for when we reopen. Okay, yeah, let's, let, let, let's talk about that, you know, because the, the Governor Baker said that slowly on March 18th, they're gonna start opening up certain, certain businesses and certain stuff. Uh, just in, in that regards, how does it, that affect you, the, the slow opening of the state? So I look at it as an advantage. So, you know, there are, there are 2,800 wives across the country and I have colleagues all over the, the, you know, the United States and we've been able to learn and watch from, from what they're doing. Um, I don't mind being one of the last states to come back online. I'm, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. um, I also am not in a rush to open if we're not ready. You know, we, we do have um, some modified services. We have emergency childcare at a couple of our locations. As you know, we've added um, shelter in Lynn. We have food distribution, we have diaper distribution. So our branches have some activity, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously we don't have anything related to member services other than our virtual community that we've set up. So, you know, I think we are um, pleasantly surprised at the pace Governor Baker is working at and very respectful of the fact that he is putting health first and foremost. Um, and we don't want to do this again. I don't want to do this again. Yeah. You know, I, I'd rather take my eight weeks <laughs> behind me and move forward as opposed to eight weeks pause and then go back to another eight weeks. That's not, yeah. that's not what we want to do. Yeah, yeah definitely. And you, you hit on something. You talked about the sheltering, you guys providing shelter. Because I read, it was a couple weeks ago that I read that you guys were going to help shelter those that, you know, the homeless and those that are in need. Uh, what what uh, gave you the what gave you guys the idea of doing that? So we had heard um, that the Lynn Homeless Coalition, you know, was looking to split up their current shelter. We all know and we've learned that social distancing is the predominant way to minimize the spread of COVID nineteen. And the situation in the shelter was they were just too close to each other. We had just finished a renovation on our third floor of our Lin Y. So it's a wide open 6,600 square feet with bathrooms. It's, it's a really good looking space. And we had built it out for ultimately childcare down the road. You know, we figured we would, we would move our childcare there. Um, then we had heard that the, uh, the shelter needed some space. We had some empty space. They had a need. 
it's a perfect combination. And that's really how the why works. We look for opportunities mm -hmm. and we respond accordingly. So um, they have uh, 20, 26 adults up there, um, a couple staff people, and they're able to spread way out, um, shower downstairs, and then eat in what was our spinning studio. We've emptied it out, put tables and chairs in there so that they can eat their meals. Um, it's actually a very nice partnership. Um, I took a walk up there maybe a week ago, mm -hmm. and um, it's very humbling to see 20 plus adults um, all over. You know, some probably were 20 years old, and I think someone was close to 75 or 80. Um, and it's, it's a humbling experience, but it, I'm glad that the Y could do a tiny bit mm -hmm. to, to um, minimize, you know, their, their overcrowdedness and yeah. hopefully, you know, hopefully ultimately we keep people safe because of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now I know there's, there's been many of organizations, you know, food shortage has been, a, has been an ongoing thing. There's many organizations in the city that provided food pantries that are helping those in need for, for your part, what, what have you guys done in your part to just try to help out in that regards? So we have food every day. Um, we, we do grab and go food. So for families or for kids, whom, whoever needs it. Um, and then we also have partnered, we partnered this past weekend with the Boys and Girls Club and B&B &B, um, meet where we gave out chicken and rice in Mother's Day packages uh, for folks. So uh, whatever we can do to help, um, we are, we're front and center. You know, Andrea, uh, Baez, who's the, the executive director there, has done an amazing job seeking out opportunities. You know, we, we may be closed our buildings as we know it, but the work that we do is probably more needed than ever. So we're grateful to be able to partner with folks, we're grateful to be part of the solution. Um, and we're continuing to do that as we, you know, continue on into week eight. Or yeah. I don't even know what week we're in. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And, and have members, what, what are some concerns that, are, that members have sent or sh have uh, expressed to you, if, if you could tell us? Because I know at this time, nobody's using their membership right now, so they don't know about the, the payments. You know, you guys do the, um, you guys deduct the payments online from each member, whoever is a member at the Y. Can you just tell yeah. us how that works? Sure. So immediately when we learned we were going to shut down, we really made an effort to communicate with our members what was going on you know their options you know so they could hold their membership they could become what's called a sustaining membership which means their 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 dues changes into a donation and they get a tax letter or they could cancel altogether um, we understand everybody's situation is different you know we've had about 30 percent of our members um, stay with us as a sustaining member uh, which is incredibly generous you know we've had about 60 or 60 percent hold which means when we open they will come back to us and then a small portion have canceled and we certainly understand that you know members concern you know we did a survey a week or so ago to all of our members and within 24 hours we got almost 2,000 results right back they want to see social distancing that was the primary concern they want to see social distancing um, and they want to see active cleaning uh, no, no surprise, we're working on both of them, um, but it was it was good to hear what they're looking for, and they're you know they're also looking to come back. Yeah, they come back. Um, it's not going to be business as usual at our Y. Our staff are going to be uh, trained in different procedures, um, and some of the things that they have grown so accustomed to, um, not going to be not going to be available at this time, and. You know, it's out of our hands. We are mm -hmm. going to comply 100% with the guidelines that are given to us um, by the Board of Health, Char Governor Charlie Baker. Um, you know, we even taking guidelines from our insurance company, mm -hmm. YSA, um, and anybody that that has something that's meaningful for us. Because yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would think that the group classes are gonna are gonna change drastically due to this. I know before. When everything was slowly shutting down, you, you guys had whoever was working in the in the weight room in the fitness center. I, I know when I was there in the mornings, it was every 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 three or four, every three to five minutes, he he would go and wipe down every machine or so. So 
the group class is getting changing and also we're going to see more when we when we do return back to the fitness center we're going to see more of that is the whoever's up there working and uh, cleaning a station at least every every three to five minutes so what you're going to see when you return you're going to see clearly defined social distancing patterns so everything from making sure at the front desk you know there's six feet barriers for people you're going to see as much of a touch-free environment as possible which means um our water bubblers are no longer their water fill stations we won't have towel service initially anyways um, group exercise classes that can be socially distanced which means every person gets 10 square feet um, to work in will be held probably in the gymnasium much more space you're not going to see organized group sports right now unless they can go outside you know the days of pickup basketball for the short-term future anyways we won't be having that um, locker rooms will likely be shut down for a little while and that's really what we're seeing trending across the country mm -hmm. um, closing down the locker rooms because how do you social distance when you have a bay of 50 lockers you can't so they're they're shutting down locker rooms um, and asking people to work out and then go home and and take your showers and things like that hopefully our swimming pool will be available for lap swimming again the instruction is tough because a lot of it is you know you're you're working directly with somebody yeah. close physical proximity if not even you know touching them as you instruct them so uh till we get better clarification on that uh we don't anticipate um having youth swim classes we do anticipate having some modified version of child care like we're doing now with emergency child care mm -hmm. as well as um, the youth center which is a critical resource for the city of lynn so that our parents can get back to work, whether they're working at home or at Market Basket or at Lynn Community Health Center or at Leahy, um, can't do it when you have yeah. kids that you feed. You know, I, I, um, I'm one of those crazy people who got a quarantine puppy yeah. and I can't even return an email without, um, without him trying to, trying to manipulate my computer. So yeah. imagine small kids. Yeah. So that's really what we're seeing and, and I think you know, we have every intention of opening, but you know, even when you go to the fitness center, you will not see the equipment that you see today, that you saw on March 16th before we closed. We'll be moving some of that out, putting it in storage, making it available for people to, to purchase the stuff that, that we know we'll never bring back. Okay. We'll see absolutely enhanced cleaning stations. It's going to be, you know, every opportunity for Purell, um for wipes combination of both all over the place now does the does the social distancing in this whole pandemic how has it affected has it affected the construction of the new uh, the, the your construction that's going on it has so we actually start back up on monday we have taken i think a three-week hiatus uh charlie baker has really stopped non-essential construction um i consider the y essential but apparently he doesn't <laughs> So it, it starts back up on Monday. So, you know, what does that mean? Originally we were going to open November 16th. So, you know, we're looking at probably the first of the year. Um, obviously um, the priority is safety. Construction workers tend to, to get close to each other when they're working on certain areas. We wanna make sure that that is, um, you know, following the guidelines that are now being dictated about construction project. There's, there is no um, latitude on making your own decisions. You know, you have to have certain things done. The city of Lynn will be doing safety inspections, which I support 100%. Uh, we want to keep people safe. So m on Monday, that will resume um, in, a, in a limited capacity so that we can honor the social distancing that we're being asked to do. All right. And, and uh, for anyone that wants any updates on on what's happening at the YMCA, or just any information regarding social distancing, regarding membership, and any of that nature, please let them know where they can go. So we have the Lynn YMCA Facebook page, and we also have the YMCA of Metro North uh, website, which is www.metronorthymca.org, and you'll be able to get all your information that you need there. Uh, there is someone at the Y um, during the day that can answer some limited phone calls. 
Um, and any message that you send will get returned immediately. My personal email is kwalsh at metronorthymca.org. I am happy to, to take all your questions and redirect them as needed to the right person. Um, we look forward to reopening. You know, we, we will um, be bringing back our staff in waves. And um, like I said, our why is really positioned to be really part of the solution in Lynn. And we want to make sure we do that safely. I mean, that that is the number one priority. And, you know, I think from, from my learnings across the country with some whys that are open, and we got some really good advice yesterday. You know, we closed so quickly. All of a sudden, of course, we're locked. We need to open slowly. We need yep. to really gauge the practices and the understanding and making sure that our materials um, are bilingual and speak to our population in, in Lynn and make sure that our staff are well-trained. Because uh, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we want to make sure we protect our employees and we want to protect the people that use our why. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's great. Well, we're looking forward to when it reopens. Uh, no, People like myself are itching to get back into the fitness center because the I will workouts. tell you, I think <laughs> there's a lot of people that are itching to get back and um, it will happen. I can tell you that. But in the meantime, we have to be patient. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I've learned is, you know, this is out of our control. Uh, so, you know, we, we just have to be patient and, and let the virus I don't know, do what it needs to do and let the scientists do what they need to do. And when it is safe, we will reopen our doors and we will do it under the umbrella of making sure that our members, that we, we truly value are safe when they come in. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. Kathleen, once again, thank you for taking the time to speak You are with me. welcome. You know, we look forward to seeing you back. Always great talking to you. I hope you guys uh, have a great day and stay safe. Thank you. You too. All right. Talk later. Bye. Bye. You guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.